Welcome to the FWAT Show on the Coil Entertainment Network, the Happy Hour Network, VillageConnectionRadio.com, iTunes, the Google Play Store, and wherever you happen to have found the podcast, if it's not one of those. I'm your host, Rob Steele. That's Jesus Jones in the background. And this is the show that lets you know it's not just you. The world has actually lost its damn mind. This episode is brought to you by United Airlines. United Airlines. We're here to sell tickets and kick ass, and we're all out of seats. I know some of you are thinking, Rob, the show's been on Mondays for the past several weeks. Why is it back on Fridays? Well, two reasons. One, my Mondays are about to get really busy with something else. And because I realized I wanted the show on Fridays anyway, because there is no daily show on Friday. So you need something to take its place, and it may as well be me. So yes, back on Fridays, and this, this is Good Friday. One of those big Christian holiday things, and probably the one that makes the least amount of sense to me. Because if you look at it, what exactly is it supposed to be celebrating? I I imagine this conversation happening between someone who doesn't know what Good Friday is and someone who does. So, today is Good Friday? Yep, sure is. Why is it called Good Friday? Our Savior died today, and we're celebrating that. Hang on a minute. What? That's not a good thing. Are you kidding? It's incredible. Hallelujah! Our Savior is dead. And that's when the world stopped making sense to me. On the one hand, that doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. On the other, it kind of goes along with everything else in the world today. For example, did you know that in March, Scotland powered every house in their country with wind power? Why? It's cheap, it's clean, it's easy, and it's doable. Conversely, here in the States, we are going completely backwards with, hey, you want some coal? It's clean coal. Someone should actually tell President Trump that there is... <clears throat> Sorry, I put those words together again and they don't work. Someone should tell him that there really is no such thing as clean coal. No matter how many times you wash it, even if you use Dawn soap who should be a sponsor of this show, it doesn't make it clean at all. But that's not the only thing we're going backwards on. Betsy Davros, Exterminate. yes, that's a Doctor Who reference, went backwards this week on student loans because President Obama put some things in place to help the students pay back college student loans because they're at an unbelievably high interest rate and they're really overpriced anyway. And considering just about every country in Europe, you don't have to pay for college. Whereas here, not only do you have to pay for it, you have to pay for it for the rest of your life. Yeah. She decided to get rid of the things that were helping students pay it back. Quote from Alexis Goldstein, the senior policy analyst for the Progressive Americans for Financial Reform, said, Davos's actions today moves us away from true accountability and creates dangers for the very student loan borrowers the department is responsible for protecting. That's not a good thing. Creating danger. Well, that's something this administration is good at. But uh, here's a radical idea. How about... Making sure that the jobs the student gets when they get out of school pay the student enough to be able to afford not just to live, but also pay back these student loans. But no, we keep making sure that the minimum wage stays very low and all the other wages stay relatively low so they can't really do it the way they're supposed to. The way the system was set up in the first place as something helpful. But we're not good with helpful. We're not even good with health care. For example, did you realize that yesterday, Donald Trump signed a law that gives states the options to deny funding for Planned Parenthood? Yeah, Planned Parenthood, where women can get health care designed for women. It's kind of like the secret deodorant, strong enough for a man but made for a woman. Planned Parenthood, it's health care that, well, they can do men, but they're better with women. And we can't have that in our society, can we? No, we have to save money for other things. And not flu shots, which, by the way, were renounced by Donald Trump this week as being a scam. Because he was offered a flu shot this week and he denied it. Oh, no, 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 no. So I'm hoping... 
kind of, that he'll actually get the flu and be laid up for a few weeks because that would mean he'd be unable to further destroy the country or spend more of our money on golf that should go toward things like Planned Parenthood and Meals on Wheels. Just saying. This past Monday, GOP Governor of Alabama Robert Bentley officially resigned. This is a good thing, but not quite as good as what's coming. Yeah, the reason he left is because he's being <clears throat> consumed by a sex scandal that had him facing possible impeachment. So he ran. Why? Because there's a lot of evidence that said, you know what? Guilty. By the way, he also pled guilty to a pair of misdemeanor charges of failing to file a major contribution report and knowingly converting campaign contributions to personal use. Now, he's not going to have any jail time because he's a Republican, so he was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. Oh, goody, another slap on the wrist. Guess what? He's white. I'd like to update a story from the last show where I mentioned that a man stole a beer truck in Stockholm, drove it through a crowd for no particular reason, uh, killing four and wounding 15. And they said it was a terrorist attack. And I said, no, it's not a terrorist attack. It's just an idiot. And you know what? No extremist group has claimed responsibility for this. So you know what? I'm right. It's still a thing. It's a horrible tragedy that happened. But it's not terrorism. Now, the guy they caught confessed to it. Well, you know, duh, they caught him still in the truck, in the driver's seat. Hello? And police chief Dan Eliason said that after questioning the suspect, they have become increasingly convinced that we have the right suspect. This quote came out in the same press conference as the admission of his confession, and yet it came out after. Hmm. You found him in the driver's seat, he confessed to doing it, and you're fairly convinced you have the right guy? Are you sure you're not an American cop? In case you missed it, the Trump administration decided to drop something called Moab, the mother of all bombs, the largest bomb the U.S. has ever created that's not nuclear, and it was dropped on Afghanistan. Why? Well, it was allegedly dropped on an ISIS camp. Wow. It, uh... Yeah, and it's all over the news. We managed to destroy two camels, a marmot, six donkeys, the cave where Tony Stark was kept in the first Iron Man movie, and a 2003 Toyota Hilux. Although, the Hilux was then given to James May, and it was tested out, and the Hilux lives! <laughs> yeah, we should probably stop that. They'd probably be unhappy if they knew we were using that clip because we just don't have the rights for it. Look, okay, the bomb is big and impressive looking. Uh, it, it looks like a big bus that they just dropped out of a C-19 transport plane. However, I think this bomb is very much like Donald Trump himself. It's big, it's orange, and it's completely useless. Now, if they could just program it to play golf, it could replace him. <laughs> Quick bit. You know how Ben Carson has been saying that low rent housing is a wonderful thing and it's all great right now and it doesn't need any upgrades at all whatsoever? He went on a tour of some low cost housing in Florida this week. The low cost housing building had an elevator that stopped and trapped Ben Carson in it for 20 minutes. You're right, Ben. No upgrades needed here. I'm a bit torn as to what should be the quote of the week. I was thinking it could be something about Representative Joe Wilson. Do you remember Joe Wilson? Back in 2009, when President Obama was addressing Congress on the whole health care thing, Joe Wilson's the one who stood kind of in the back of the room and kept yelling, you lie, at Obama every time he made a point. Yeah. Well, it turns out this past week, Joe Wilson was in a town hall meeting where he said, quote, I have also supported the local solicitor here and the solicitor in Lexington and all efforts to make sure that violence against women is fully enforced. Well, the people in the town hall started chanting, you lie. That might be the quote of the week because back in 2013, Wilson voted against the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. Caught in a lie, unlike Obama, who wasn't lying at all. 
But I'm pretty sure that's the second quote of the week because you lie is kind of a lame quote. It's appropriate, but it doesn't really work. I think the best quote of the week comes from James Austin Johnson, who said, quote, Fox News has done to our grandparents what grandparents thought violent video games would do to us. That's a quote of the week. I'm trying to figure out what it is we need to do with a guy named David Clark. He is Milwaukee's conservative sheriff. He sent out an email last week that said, vote for Sheriff Clark for U.S. Senate. Although, he made it look like it came from Rudy Giuliani. Rudy, Rudy had nothing to do with this. But that's not the only thing that makes me worried about this guy. He says that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist movement, a hate group, and calls it Black Lies Matter. He says Al Sharpton is a charlatan, and then he should shut up and go back to the gutter. He's urging black voters to leave the Democrat plantation. He's tired of playing the race card thing. He calls Planned Parenthood Planned Genocide. And he posted to Facebook, Islam, don't try to understand sick ideology of Islam, destroy it. Really? This is a guy you want in the Senate? He's also said that the only time he'd reach across the aisle to Democrats is to grab one of them by the throat. Abdicating violence. Really, and, and I'm sorry, the Black Lives Matter thing? Very much against that, even though, and here's a part that confuses the crap out of me, he's black too. Really? Any ideas on what we should do with this guy other than not vote for him? Bit of tech news to throw out. Thought some of the interesting things came out this week. For example, there's a company called Spiceworks that judges how many people use what operating systems. And 14% of all businesses worldwide are still using Windows XP. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Windows 7 actually has the highest share at 69%. Windows 10 is only on 9%, followed by Windows 8 at 5 Now, something else about Microsoft this week. They came out with a massive, massive update, update to Windows 10. It took my computer offline for about an hour while it installed. Now... Edge can open ebooks. Really, that's the only change I've been able to find. Microsoft Paint can allegedly do 3D images on tablets and touch screens. I have neither. So, gee, I'd like to thank the people in Redmond, Washington for knocking my productivity offline. That was fun. But there is some good tech news that came out this past week. For example, T Mobile, Dish Network, and Comcast were the big winners in a governmental wireless spectrum auction. What does this mean? It means that the government auctioned off more bandwidth for wireless products. Actually, it's kind of in the FM radio range. So that means that T-Mobile is about to have considerably better cell service indoors, and it'll cover greater distances from each tower. Take that Verizon and AT&T. I'm not exactly sure what Comcast is going to do with it, and Dish Network has already said, we just got it so that DirecTV wouldn't get it. But speaking of DirecTV, for some reason, the announcement of the results of this auction have in the URL T-Mobile, Comcast, and DirecTV. DirecTV didn't win this. What is that doing there? My guess? Typo. Oops. But there is one other bit of tech news. It has to do with the Google Assistant. Do you know the Google Assistant? You can get various products that, you know, Bluetooth devices, Android phones. There's even the Google Home system that's a voice-activated product. And it starts when you say the words, OK, Google. And those are the keywords that activate the product. And you can ask it questions, and it will give you answers. Well, Burger King, in its infinite wisdom, decided to end a recent commercial by saying, OK, Google. What's in the Whopper burger? And that would activate Google products, whether you were wanting it to do that or not. And all of a sudden, the Google product would go to Wikipedia and start to tell you what was on a Whopper. Google was not happy with this and has actually gone ahead and issued a patch, so that doesn't happen anymore. But also, people across the internet, frankly, because they're dick went to Wikipedia and changed the burger's entry to include some ingredients such as toenails 
and cyanide. Boy, did the king not like this. And you know what? They brought it on themselves. And I'm going to leave you with this reminder of just a few little things like Kelsey Grammer. You know Kelsey Grammer. He played Frasier on TV or Beast in some of the X-Men movies. You know him. Did you know he ended his 15-year marriage over the phone? You know, beloved TV commentator and interviewer Larry King has been divorced nine times. Donald Trump and Newt Gingrich, they're each on their third marriage. Bob Dole, John McCain, and even the beloved Ronnie Reagan himself have had a divorce. Tiger Woods, the biggest golf name on the planet, would bang anything he could get his hands on while he was married. The divorce rate of Americans is at 53%, and yet people in North Carolina still think that gay marriage will destroy the sanctity of this beloved institution. Really? Are you sure about that? Because they've introduced yet another bill to try to make sure that gay marriages are illegal in the state of North Carolina. Really? All that's going to do is piss off the locals. It's not a good idea. All you're going to do is hurt the people in your own state. By the way, I I'm not sure you realize this, but gay people still have the right to vote too. Not a good idea. This would be kind of like using chemical weapons on your own people. You know, like the Nazis did. Or, uh, or like we did at the North Dakota Pipeline protest. And actually, while I'm at it, would what's going on in Flint, Michigan count as using chemical weapons against your own people? Do you think that counts? Do you think it doesn't count? Do you have any other questions about the show? Go ahead and contact me either through the website, thefwatshow.com, where there's buttons for Facebook and Twitter and ways to subscribe to the show through iTunes and the Google Play Store and a number of other places. Or you can email me, rob at thefwatshow.com. I would like to thank the Happy Hour Network for passing the show along. Appreciate it, fellas. And I'd also love to thank Jesus Jones for letting me use this song in the background. I think it's, it's wonderful. It makes a great theme. And just for fun, keep an eye out for the new album. It's coming out, I believe it's in June, last I heard. I'll keep you updated on that. Until then, have a good weekend, everybody. And remember, be safe, because it's gotten really stupid out there. <laughs>